Well, hello and Happy New Year! So, have you been wondering what I did after my garden scroll was finished? Well, I started working on another scroll and here it is. It's definitely not finished yet. I'm still working on it. I'll show you what I have so far. This one is very different than the garden scroll. This one is much more intentional and it's much more personal. All of the images here have some specific personal significance and they all relate to a place that I visited last summer. Can okay, I'll tell you a little bit later in the video what the, what the significance of all of these different things is. Can you guess? <laughs> Do they seem related to you? And this is as far as I got. And then I lost this little head here. It's a phrenology head and if you're familiar with that. And it went missing for a while, so this piece stalled and it's actually got a little surprise underneath. <laughs> and yeah, what do you think this is all about here? I know I have already told you it's about a library, but it's about a very particular library. While I was looking for the phrenology head, I kind of leapt ahead to the very middle of my scroll and started working on this piece. And as you can see, this is still definitely a work in progress. It's got lots more to go, but that's not the only scroll I started. I also started working on an underwater themed scroll. And this one is a make along that I'm making along with people just like you. And if you'd like to make an underwater themed scroll, maybe you'd like to join us and I'll I'll leave a link to the site where you can sign up in the description box below but now let me tell you how my library scroll came to be my daughter got a, a summer job working in the library at McGill University in Montreal she started sending me pictures of books that she was coming across this one in particular it's not an important or prominent book in the collection but she said it caught her eye because of the fun fabric cover and maybe you noticed that this book was the inspiration for the first part of my scroll she also told me that they had some ancient Sri Lankan books called Olas in their collection and these books look a little bit like Venetian blinds and that but when she told me about them I was very determined to visit her it the library both both her and the library and one of the things that I saw when I was there is this very 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 long scroll I think it's about 10 meters long it's a Japanese scroll from Osaka in the 1800s and it follows the dissection of a human cada cadaver and it just kind of goes on and on and on. And when I was thinking about what I was going to do after I finished the garden scroll, I started thinking about this particular scroll. Yes, it is a woman. There are so many different connections, stitches and sutures and bandages and things as well as the scroll. So the place where she was working is called the Osler Library of the History of Medicine. And here is their phrenology hat that they have here wearing a mask. I'll show you some of the other books that I saw in the library. De Humani Corporis Fabrica, it's one of their large anatomy textbooks. There's this 12th century book about plants from Morocco, southern Spain, and southern Portugal that has these fabulous illustrations. But that's not the oldest book in their collection. The, the oldest document in their collection is actually a clay tablet that was written in cuneiform that describes recipes to treat eye ailments. Which eye ailments? They don't know. That part of the tablet is missing. One of the recipes apparently mentions using a scorpion's tongue, so that that made it into my piece. And then from the oldest document that they have in their collection, we move into possibly the most valuable document that they have and it's a book by Copernicus documenting the, his heliocentric theory which was quite scandalous at the time and then I have my centaur there with a Sagittarius cutie mark on her tail and why is Sagittarius in my medical scroll well it turns out that medical astrology is a thing and there she is firing an arrow at my phrenology head there. Why? Because of this illustration. And I've sewn the phrenology head onto this page using the similar stitch that you would use to sew on a stab bound book because this 
poor person with their brain exposed was inspired by another Japanese book, which was sewn together using a stab binding. And that's where I am right now. And I'll tell you about the other the other central bit when it's finished. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed a peek at what I've been up to and I would love to have you join join us in my underwater stitchy scroll make along as well. So hopefully we'll see you again soon and that's it for now.